Can we do that right now in this house? Just let the sweet presence of Jesus just settle on us. I let just love him right now. If you feel like speaking in tongues, go ahead and speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. You're our God no matter what, God. You're our God no matter what. Hallelujah. No matter what we face, you're our God. No matter what we go through, you're our God. You're faithful and true. You're faithful and true. God. Yes, you are. I worship you today, God. 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 I worship you in this house. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Worship you today, God. Worship you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Thank you, sister. Praise God. Good to see you all here in the house of the Lord. Good to be in the presence of God. Good to be with God's people. Amen. Good to pray with one another. Amen. Amen. We, you know, there's no guarantees in life that everything's going to be easy. Amen. And uh, Jesus said it a long time ago, in this world you will face tribulation. If he just ended it there, I, I don't know how I'd feel. But he didn't end it there. He said, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And so, amen. So the one we follow, he has overcome all things that have come against him. Amen. Again, the word teaches us that he was tempted at all points like as we are yet without sin. Amen. I, I believe that he knows what it is to lose a friend. Lose someone he loves. Amen. As a man. Amen. But uh, amen. He, so he knows how to comfort us also. Praise God. Again, it's good to see you all here. Let's go to the word of God this morning. Let's go to Mark chapter 7. I think I'll just read one verse this morning. Mark chapter 7, verse 24. I think we'll just read this one verse. There's more here. Amen. But I'll just read the one for now. Amen. This morning in this house. All right. It says, from there he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Then it says he entered a house and he wanted no one to know it. All right. Then it ends with, but he could not be hidden. Hallelujah. He could not be hidden. So by the grace of God this morning, we're going to attempt to preach to you. He cannot be hidden. Amen. Hallelujah. He cannot be hidden. Would you, would you pray with us right now in this place? Can we all pray together? Lord Jesus, again, you see our hearts. You know our situations. You know what we all face in this place. And Hallelujah. So glad, God, that you're not hidden today to your, your people. So glad, oh God, that uh, we can come to you and we can believe you and walk with you, God. And I pray that you would again continue to speak to our hearts in this room. That we, oh God, would respond to you today in faith. We're going to allow you to do what you do. You are a miracle worker, God. You are a miracle worker. You heal. You deliver. You set free. Praise God. Yes, you do. You raise the dead. You open the blind eye. Hallelujah. You bring truth to mankind that's hungry for you. Yes, you do. Hallelujah. You do those things. You do those things. You do those things. I give praise to you today. Praise to you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God. You're already coming to the altar. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 All right. You may be seated today. I'm going to make some statements here. I've made them in the past, but I was reminded of them yesterday. And so I, I just want to lay these things out. Uh, what we believe, what we act on, and what we build on 
are the most important concepts that we have. All right, let me run that by you again. What we believe, what we act on, and what we build on are the most important concepts we have. In other words, these concepts, whether they are about life, family, or God, are fundamentally important. All right. Now, these concepts should be built on Scripture. All right? If we build on Bible text and truth, we build right and durable. If we build our concepts on other sources, we build faulty and weak concepts of God. Amen. Amen. Just, just running it by it today. So amen. So as we declare the word of the Lord to you this morning, Amen. We want to build not upon weak and faulty things, or, but we want to build on the durable Word of God, which abides forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word shall. It's never going to pass away. It's right and it's durable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so this morning, we read in the Scripture that Jesus had entered a house and he wanted no one to know that he was there. And then the Bible says to us, but he could not be hidden. Amen. When we come together in this place today, it is our hope and our desire that our God would come amongst us. I told them earlier today, you know, if you don't show up, God, there's no sense in us getting together. If you're not in the house, why do we even come? All right, just, just being honest with you. Amen. In other words, God, we want you to come amongst us. We want you to do uh, wonderful things in this house today. Amen. I realize that when I speak to this audience, that this audience is a mixed audience, not, not in the sense of uh, a man or woman or children or adults, but it's a mixed audience that there's people here that have faith, and then there's people that have very weak faith. And then there are people really here today that have no faith in, in this house. I realize this morning, as I talk to you in this room, that there's just, we're not all on the same page, nor are we all in the, on the same level of a walk with God. Hallelujah. But no, regardless of where we're at today, God does want to speak to our hearts. God does want to act in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so thankful for this scripture. I was in a Bible study this week, and we were happened to be reading this portion of scripture, and it just sort of leaped off the pages at me, that last phrase, but he could not be hidden. Hallelujah. And it just stuck with me, and I remember that. And when I left there, that Bible study, amen, I went and, and I began to build the Bible. In fact, I was building that this message friday morning as i was sitting with you guys there that was what i was on my ipad doing amen that ipad that i almost lost praise god i had been with justin amen and i had been with janae on monday night and i'd come out i had to get to the house of correction and i stuck my ipad up on the rack of my car sort of just got it in there you know snug so it wouldn't fall out and then i i remembered my coat was in the house and I had to come back get my coat well I come out with my coat jumped in the car drove amen all the way to KCDC and I was picking them up and putting them down because I was running a little late amen went in and had a Bible study come walking out and brother Noah could testify to this I looked at the side of my car and said, oh my lord there's my iPad and immediately I said thank you God Thank you, God. It's just a tool. It's not something I would worship. But, man, there's just a lot of stuff on that thing that I use. Amen. And, and to think that I almost, I almost lost it by my own uh, carelessness. But I got a great God. Amen. And I'm so glad he's not hidden. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So as we read this text to you today, 
Amen. I began to ponder it uh, and think about it. And I do know, I do know without a shadow of a doubt this morning that it is true that God remains hidden to certain individuals. I, I know that. I know that. And as I began to think about that, it brought me back to Genesis chapter 4. When Abel and Cain had, amen, both of them offered sacrifice to God. And God had received the sacrifice of Abel, but rejected Cain's sacrifice. And God had come to Cain and basically said to him, If you do well, will you not also be accepted? And then God preached him a little sermon about anger and how anger can get a hold of you and how anger can do destructive things. And, and he, but he didn't listen to God. And then in the field, the word of God says he rose up against his dear brother and slew him, killed him in the field. And then probably hit his body. He thought he was done, but he wasn't done because God showed up. And he said, Adam, where's your brother? Or excuse me, Cain, where's your brother? And, and he says, am I my brother's keeper? And became very insolent and very arrogant, very prideful. There was not in him a spirit of repentance. There was not in him a humility before God, but an arrogance and pride that would suggest that he was willing to cover his sin. Amen. And not acknowledge the fact that he was wrong. Amen. And the Bible says, amen, that God would drive him from Amen, that place. And it says in the 14th verse, Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground, and I shall be hidden from your face, or I shall be hidden from your presence. It wasn't that God was trying to hide. It was the fact that Cain was unwilling to be open with God, and Cain was unwilling to be, amen, repentant towards God. And Cain was filled with arrogance and pride and and so God basically is telling Cain, I'm going to hide from you, Cain. Still in the house this morning. And so I realize, I realize the importance of being humble. I realize, amen, the importance of being honest with God. You don't have to be honest with God. You can lie to God, but that don't make no difference. He already knows. Amen. So I, I, I don't understand, but we do it all the time. We give God half-truths and we make excuses for what we do. And, amen. And, and we think somehow that it makes it okay. Amen. Not understanding that he sees the thoughts and intents of our hearts. Amen. And flat out we can't hide from him. But I can tell you this much. Cain. Cain was hidden from God. You can read through the Old Testament. You can read about the children of Israel. You can read about the covenant that they had. Amen. Through their father Abraham. You can read the prophets. You can read how God blessed them and how God brought them into a land flowing with milk and honey and how God drove out their enemies and how God, amen, gave them righteous men to lead them. Wonderful and powerful men of God. Amen. You can read all those things, but yet, amen, they would turn from God. They would follow other things. Amen. They would follow other gods. You will read in the Old Testament, in, in the King James, it will say that Israel went a-whoring. And we read that today, and immediately we, we associate that with physical. You know, a young man chasing after a loose woman. Amen. And, and we associate it like that. But what God was saying to Israel was, yeah, I, was your I was your husband, and I was your lover, and I was the one that brought you out, and I was the one that gave you all that you have, and yet you're chasing that God down there in that alley. Amen. And you're, 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 you're offering sacrifices. Amen. In that place. Amen. And that repeatedly through the Old Testament. Amen. Israel would wander away from God. And I, I look and say, how could they do it? But then I realize today that we are perfectly capable of doing the same thing. Amen. We got a God that has loved us. We got a God that has washed us from our sins. We got a God that's filled us with his spirit. We got a God that gives us peace in very difficult times. How could we, how could we wander away after some other God? But we do. We do. Isaiah would say in 59.2 of Isaiah, 
but your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So it's understanding the word of God helps me to realize that I must be true to God and that God will hide from those that want to continue to live a sinful life. Quiet in the house now. You wonder why your prayers aren't answered. You wonder why God is so distant. Well, maybe you ought not to look at God, but look at yourself. Maybe you ought to see what kind of concepts you've got, what kind of lifestyle you're living. But you sure want him to show up when things get bad. You sure want him to be with you, amen, when trouble arises in your life, amen. But God may just stay hidden to you until you really humble yourself before him. Ezekiel would say in Ezekiel 39, amen, the Gentiles, verse 23, the Gentiles shall know the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Not God, but their iniquity, their lawlessness, because they were unfaithful to me. Notice it says unfaithful to him. Therefore, I hid my face from them. Now, the message is about the fact that he cannot be hidden, but yet I'm reading to you in the word of God, places where God hid himself from, of all things, his own people. Amen. Therefore, I hid my face from them. I gave them into the hand of their enemies. God gave them into the hand of their enemies. And they fell by the sword. And then it goes on, verse 24. According to their uncleanliness and according to their transgression, I have dealt with them and hidden my face from them. Another reason or the, the very reason of why God was hiding is because of their actions. Their actions, not his actions. Their lifestyle, not his. And so as I read that this morning, I want to, amen, humble myself before God. I really do. I want to humble myself before God. I don't want to be arrogant in his presence. I want him, amen, to be the ruler of my life, to be the God of my soul. Hallelujah. I don't want him to hide from me. I want to have access to God. I really do. I really do. But I know, I know that he will hide from those who are willfully committing sin. Brothers and sisters, I'm trying to tell some of you something this morning. Amen. God's not, amen, in this is a game he's not doing the things he's doing with you because he doesn't he doesn't love you and he hates you that's not true at all what what keeps him from you what keeps you from his presence is your own actions are your own words your own sin hallelujah hello are you still with me hallelujah amen so so as we gather together, it's, it's always good. It's always good that when you begin to pray that you begin first by confessing your sin after you've praised him. Amen. Just, just opening up. Just getting honest with God. Just get honest with him. Everybody say get honest with him. We got to get honest with God. Amen. He, he's, not, he's not our vending machine. He's not our vending machine. Amen. Amen. You know what I mean by a vending machine? If I got some money, I can get some candy. I know that. I used to fill vending machines. Hallelujah. I know that. And you just, A, B, C, D, all the way down, and then a number. And you just push a, a letter and a number, and whatever you see there, it's now yours. You just simply had to have money. But God is not a vending machine. That you just come to him and you ask him all these things. Amen. 
and he just he's got to give it to you. he's got to give it to me no the first thing you've got to do is make sure that your heart is right first thing you've got to do is humble yourself in his presence you'll never ever receive the holy ghost without first having repented never ever amen if you get baptized and you haven't repented all you simply did is get wet that's all you did that's all you did so i think there's that negative brother wassman that we're speaking about here I, i'd like to move on to other things here amen if i can this morning so i asked the question what can't god possibly hide from we know he can hide we know he hides because of the sins of men but what can't god possibly hide from what is going to bring him out every time amen what is going to make him come out of hiding every time well, amen when you play hide and seek with god amen what will bring him out where you don't even have to go amen and find exactly where he was amen I always love when little children play hide and seek amen you know they they stand behind something and and you say where are you or shiloh where are you shiloh where are you and they answer <laughs> i'm over here <laughs> no that's that's not how you're supposed to play hide and seek you're supposed not to say anything at all amen you're supposed to remain hidden till they find you but i'm here to tell you right now amen god will come out of hiding he'll come out of hiding he'll be like my granddaughter shiloh you just gotta know what you gotta do and he won't be able to hide from you hallelujah oh hallelujah hallelujah praise god praise god so for us to get an understanding of this, can I just talk to you for a little while this morning? Amen. If you were to follow Mark 7, amen, you would know that he was talking to some Pharisees and scribes, and they, uh, they had noticed that his disciples, that they were eating bread and they had not washed their hands ceremonially. And so they immediately they found fault with that. Amen. And, and uh, you see, when they did it, when they went to the marketplace, they came home and they would uh, not eat until they washed their hands, which I guess is a good thing. But it uh, had nothing to do with hygiene. It had everything to do with tradition. And going through some ceremonial acts that was supposed to, according to the Pharisees, make you ceremonial clean. And Jesus' disciples did not do that. And they were questioning that. They were finding fault with that. It is hard to be around very, very critical people. It's hard to have people in our life that they never see anything good, but they always see fault. Amen. No matter how well you try, no matter what you do, they, they don't have anything good to say to you. They only tell you what you did wrong or what they perceive to be wrong. Uh, that, that's a very difficult environment to be in. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. But mom and dad, amen. If your, your children learn to praise your kid, don't, don't just praise them because they, amen, they wash their hands, but, 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 but learn to praise them when they do good things, you know? Learn to, learn to praise them. Amen. Don't, don't, let, don't let your only conversation with your children be a negative conversation, all right? Don't let, don't let your conversation with your wife only be a negative conversation. No, don't let your conversation with your husband only be a negative conversation. But learn, learn, learn to, amen, to praise Learn to build up. Can you all say amen to what I'm preaching this morning? I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to you right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Amen. We, we can all focus on the wrong. We can all focus because we're human beings and we're imperfect. And we can make it our mission in life. Amen. To make sure, amen, that it's done. Amen. You know what? I, I'm not an in-the-box person. Amen. You give me a picture to color. I'll color outside the lines. Is what I do. Amen. And there's other people just like me. We'll color outside the lines. Maybe we just see a different picture than you see. But then there are people, that's all they do. They, they color in the lines. And they use specific crayons for specific things. Amen. And, and God help us if, if the color that we choose is not the color that they would think goes on that picture. Amen. Because that sure lets you know. Amen. And there's people, I'm not saying just because you've pointed that out that you're critical, but I'm saying there's just people, they're always living like that. Always living like that. This is what the Pharisees were like. Amen. It was by their concepts and by, by the elders that they had chosen, amen, to live. Amen. And Jesus would say in response to their criticism about his disciples, amen, he said, Amen. From the book of Isaiah in verse 6. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Are you hearing what the word of the Lord says? In other words, they had the window dressing. But that's all they had. It was all about show. There was no substance. And he said in verse 7, in vain they worship me. Teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. He went on to tell them that, amen, all too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your traditions. All right. Good thing, I'm, I'm physically having issues right now in my body. So just, you just preach with it. You'll make it easier for me if you'll preach with me. Don't sit on me today, but preach with me today, all right? All right, praise God. Praise God. You know, he was like us. He gets a little tired of that stuff too. You know, you could have did it better. You could have did it another way. You could have on and on and on and on and on and on. Amen. He, he would get to the root of the issue when he would tell him in verse 20, what comes out of a man that defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts and adulteries and fornications and murders and thefts and covetousness and wickedness and deceit and lewdness and an evil eye and blasphemy and pride and foolishness. And all these evil things come from within and defile a man. And he was talking to men, amen, that day, that that's exactly where they were at. And whether they realized it or not, God was hidden to them. And so, you will read, this is just the beginning of where we're going right now. And so, the Bible says, that he arose from Galilee. He arose and he went to the region of Tyre in Sidon. In other words, he left Jewish territory in Galilee and he entered a purely heathen country, the land of Phoenicia. He didn't just cross over the border. He went deep into the country of the pagans why he was wanting to hide himself from the scornfulness the ugliness amen of those that should have received the message he no doubt was a little tired of the antagonism of the jewish leaders always always talking always finding fault always speaking negatively amen and so he literally leaves the land of galilee and crosses in to amen tyre and sidon amen weary from heavy ministry weary from instructing people just needing a little rest just needing a place just to recuperate oh brothers and sisters what we don't understand that our negative spirit and the things that we, amen, encourage in our life and the things that we open up to our life, they do affect other people. 
They do affect other people. And the spirit that you have, if it's not of God, well then where, where is it from? Amen. The spirit that you entertain, if it's not the spirit of God, then what spirit are you entertaining? And after a while, people that are trying to reach God are tired. They're tired. Physically, they're tired. Amen. They need some rest, some rejuvenation. I realize that Jesus was God manifested in flesh, but you also got to understand he had to deal with his humanity. And so he goes to a foreign land to hide himself. Amen. He's been talking to the people of Israel for quite some time. He has faced resistance. Resistance for quite some time. Now, news begins to be spread around the great teacher, the healer. He's come out of Israel's borders. In fact, he's lodging in a house. Amen. Here in Tyre. Amen. Where's he at? We've heard about him. We know some things. Yeah, but he's hiding himself. And I can see his, amen, a woman begins to wander the streets asking, did you see a large group of men come through? Have you seen this one that they call the Messiah? Has he come through your area? I can see as she begins to knock on doors of homes. Amen. Asking, is Jesus here? Is he showed up here? Do you know anybody that knows Jesus? Do you know anybody, amen, that walks with him? Can you tell me something about him? Because I'd sure like to know him. But he's hidden from me. He's hidden from me. That's why this scripture is so significant to me today. Hallelujah. But he went into a house, but he could not hide himself in that house. Amen. Something was going to draw him out. My God, something was going to get a hold of him. Can you see amen? Can you say amen? My God, we need to stand for a moment. You're drowsy today. I'm just going to tell you right out, you're drowsy. You're struggling today. I'll tell you how you don't have to struggle. Start saying amen. Get up and shout a little bit. Lift your hands a little bit. Praise God a little bit. Hallelujah. All right. You may be seated. Now I've instructed you. Now if you like something that is said, stand up and clap your hands. Amen. That will help you to fight. Amen. Whatever you're fighting today. Maybe you didn't get enough sleep. Or maybe you're just, you're just feeling drowsy. Hallelujah. 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 I know one thing. It is impossible, impossible for him to remain hidden. What draws him out? What brings him out? What causes him to act? What keeps him from being hidden? What makes him come out giggling from behind the piece of furniture saying, I'm here! Amen. No, Shiloh. You're ruining the game. You're supposed to, you're not, you're not supposed to laugh behind the furniture. You're not supposed to come out and tell me where you're at. I think my God's a little like my granddaughter. You just, you can, you can draw him out just like you can draw my granddaughter out of hiding. And so she finally finds him. All right. And she asked him for help. All right. Now you can read this also in the 15th chapter of Matthew. But Jesus did not even answer her. Encouraged by his silence, his disciples urged him to send her away. 
All right, my God. You got you to you see this. You, you got to get this. This will stop you from whining. I don't know why to do it. It will stop you from whining. When you see the picture of this woman. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Mike. Thank you. And when Jesus did speak, he was not even speaking to the woman, but to his disciples. In other words, his words just seemed to exclude her completely. And he says, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. None of these barriers stopped her from pressing on with her plea. He ignores her, doesn't speak to her. His disciples say, send her away. Amen. He doesn't, when he does talk, he talks to them. But none of these barriers, none, N-O-N-E, amen, will cause her to quit. She says, I can get you out of hiding. I can get you out of hiding. I know what to do to get your attention. It is significant in the Gospels. Two times, two times, just two times. Is it recorded that Jesus commended great faith? And in both occasions... He was responding to the faith of the Gentiles and not the Jews. The Syrophoenician woman and the Roman centurion. Amen. It is also, it seems, noteworthy to me that in both these situations where God delivers and God heals, he did it at a distance. He never went to the house of the centurion. He never went to the Syrophoenician's woman's house. He did it from a distance. It would suggest to me that he was staying in accordance with the plan of God. Amen. I have come first to the house of Israel. I've come, amen, for them. I've come out of hiding. I've been hiding, they say, theologians say, for some 400 years, there had not been a word from God. Amen. And now... He's come out of hiding to his people. Amen. And so he doesn't step out of line. Amen. I would that they had paid attention to that. Because when you get into Acts, they, they stayed amongst themselves. They did. They did. And God had to send, amen, angels to Cornelius' house. And God had to give a vision to Peter. Why couldn't they remember what their Lord did? Why couldn't they remember that he went down into pagan territory? That he, amen, did miraculous things outside of Israel. We're only comfortable with concepts that fit us. Amen. Many times we think the only place God can work is in here. Amen. Or perhaps it's going to work in here when it's the specific preacher. Hallelujah. That somehow God is curtailed by humanity. But I'm here to talk to you about something they'll never hide from. I am so blessed today. I really am. You don't know how blessed you are. I know we're generations removed away from Pentecost. I know we're generations removed from, amen, Cornelius receiving the word in Caesarea. But Paul writes during that time period when there's a fuss about Jews and Gentiles and amen, so much so that amen, people came out of Jerusalem and they would uh, cause Peter and Barnabas and others to withdraw from, from the Gentile believers. And Bible says, Paul says, I withstood Peter to his face. I know we're far removed from that, ladies and gentlemen. But in Ephesians chapter 2, if you just let me take a moment, Paul writes 
Amen. It talks about Gentiles in the flesh who were called the uncircumcision by the circumcision. He talks about that time in verse 12. At that time, you were without Christ. You don't even get it. You don't get the purpose of God. You don't understand the privilege that you have today. Amen. If you understood the privilege of walking with God and serving God, it caused you to react in a different way than you're reacting even right now. But we've just been in this thing too long. We've had too many good experiences with God. And so we have forgot from where we came from. We have forgot just how, amen, evil we had been. We have forgot that we are a bunch of pagans on our way to the lake of fire. And God didn't have to do anything for us at all. We were without Christ. We were aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. We were strangers from the covenants of promise. Having no hope without God in this world. That's I'm not trying to be ugly. That's the problem long-time apostolics have. They've enjoyed the privileges of God so long that they think those privileges are a right. And they've never been a right. They're simply there because of God and his mercy and his grace. And when we think it's our right, we become arrogant. 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 And I'm here to tell you right now, you hear me well today. God will hide from you when you become arrogant. And so, when Paul speaks to us in the 18th or the, the 13th verse, but now, everybody say, but now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Some of you can associate with it even better than I can, because I was raised around this thing. I was raised, amen. My God, that means that I owe so much more than anybody else in this house. If you've been raised in apostolic, you've been in an apostolic home all your life, do you understand the legacy you have? Do you understand what God is going to require of you? If you think you can float through it, if you think you can excuse your way into heaven, if you think that you can have a lousy, stinking bad attitude and somehow God's going to wink at that, he's going to say, no, no, I put you right in the middle of this thing when you were an infant. I put you right in the middle of this thing when you were a small child. You know about the Holy Ghost even from a young age. You know about baptism even from a young age. You've seen, amen, those before you worship and praise and pray, amen. Don't think for a moment that God's going to let any of us off just be simply because we were born into this thing, privileged to be in this thing. Oh God. Oh God. But now in Christ Jesus, you were once were far off and been brought near by the blood. And then he says in verse 18, well, verse 17, Paul says, and he came and he preached peace to you who were afar off, meaning the Gentiles. And to those who are near, meaning the Jews. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. I'm in his presence because of him. I'm in his presence because of the blood. May I say this and not sound arrogant to you. I'm in this presence because of some things that I'm doing that bring him out of hiding. Mm, 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 mm. You see, you see, it was noted. He's in Tyre and Sidon. 
Tyre and Sidon are not known for their faith. All right. He would say in Matthew 11, Woe to you, Cozen, and woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it would be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. Don't tell me, long time apostolic, that that scripture does not fit us. It fits us. We have seen the notable things of God. It's in our history. It's in our fabric. We have, we have seen it with our own eyes. We have watched many people get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We have seen many people buried with him in baptism and see their face rise and shine with a, with a smile. We have seen those things. Hey, do you know who lived in Bethsaida? Peter, Andrew, and Philip were all from Bethsaida. Do you really think they kept this to themselves? When they got into home turf and home territory, they went home and said, oh man, you ought to see what Jesus did today. Oh man, amen, you ought to see. Amen, the devils ran like cowards before them. They heard it. But even the witness of Peter, Andrew, and Philip, amen, to their hometown, Could not draw them out because they were filled with unbelief. Now hear me, hear me, hear me. Great faith is faith that takes God at his word and will not let go until God meets the need. You, you, need, to hear it, you need to hear it again. Great faith is faith that takes God at his word and will not let go until God meets the need. Great faith. Great faith can lay hold of even the slightest encouragement and turn it into a fulfilled promise. today you want to bring God out today he'll respond to your faith you want to bring God out today he'll respond to your spiritual hunger he will leave you alone if you're not hungry and don't go through don't go through the semantics well I believe hogwash when you really believe you act We can fall into traps. We can say all the right things, but really, we're really not believing God. Ha! Ha! He's coming out of hiding today. He's coming out of hiding today. He's coming out of hiding. He will not hide from people that demonstrate faith and hunger. Oh, hallelujah. All right. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just stay with us just a little longer here. Go ahead. You can stand and worship. You can do whatever you want. But hear me. Oh, I ought to be saying today to the Lord, increase my faith. My God. Increase. There's a woman down in Tyre that he wouldn't even talk to. That she had to find. That when he did speak, he spoke to his disciples. And he wasn't really talking to her. But she said, oh, no. Oh, no, I want you to know something, Jesus. Amen. Although you're telling us that it's not fit for the children to give bread to the dogs. Hey, but, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. In other words, what she's saying, 
I don't need the whole loaf. Just give me a crumb. That'll be enough. It brought him out of hiding. He couldn't stay hidden in that house. It brought him out of hiding. All right. So let me, let me just, I, this is a high note right now. You can receive anything you want from God. Yes, you can. But hear me now. I must give warning. Just keep praising God. You're not bothering me. I must give warning. I must give warning to us this morning. Hallelujah. What will cause God to hide from you when you reject revelation? When you reject revelation, God will begin to hide from you. John, John addresses it. In John 1, he says, verse 11, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. In other words, those that should have recognized that he was the Messiah, those who had a long time relationship with God, those who had revelation, those who knew that there was one God, those who had the prophets to, amen, that preached to him, amen. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. In John 8, he would have a discussion with the Pharisees and say that Abraham rejoiced to see his day. And they would say to Jesus in 57, you're not the year old. Have you seen Abraham? And in verse 58, Jesus would say to them, I say to you before Abraham was, I am. That ought to have them dancing in the aisles. That ought to have them running the pews. That ought to have them shouting. But what did they do? They picked up stones to throw at him. And you will read in verse 59 that Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Why? Because they were rejecting revelation. That they had been waiting to receive. In John chapter 10, he would say in verse 30, I and my Father are one. Amen. And they would pick up stones. And he would say to them in verse 32, Many good works have I shown you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? And they would say, For good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Revelation was looking at him, amen, through eyes, through flesh, and they were ignoring it. They were coming against it. My friend, if God gives you revelation about himself, whatever you do, don't come against it. Don't ignore it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Why? Because if you don't, he will hide himself from you. He would say in John 12, verse 36, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may become the sons of light. That's what he told them. And then it finishes the verse. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. Just speak to my heart, God. You see, if you get revelation to him, you'll have a mighty big Jesus on your hands. If what you call revelation diminishes Jesus, that ain't revelation. If what you call revelation just makes Jesus slightly bigger, uh, you're, you're getting there. But I'm telling you, when you get a revelation, you got a big Jesus. You got a big Jesus. And so he's coming into Jerusalem in Luke 19. And as he nears the city, he begins to weep. If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, he says, verse 42, the things that would make for your peace. 
But now, they are hidden from your eyes. Revelation walked their streets. Revelation taught them, spoke to them. Revelation acted. But they were rejecting Revelation. And now, he was becoming hidden from them. I have talked to people that got a revelation of the oneness of God. Got a revelation of Jesus' name baptism. But then, they went back to other things. And you would talk to them today and you wouldn't even know that at one time they felt that he was one and that his name was one. They had received revelation, but they do. I, I'm, I'm preaching to you right now. You don't, un, you don't understand the danger. You don't understand the danger of rejecting revelation. Because God will hide himself from you. Walk in the light, brothers and sisters. Believe in the light. That you may become the sons of light. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get home. So it is impossible for God to hide from faith and hunger. The Apostle Paul would speak to pagans, philosophers, on Mars Hill in Acts 17. And he would say to them, 27, so that they should the Lord. In the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. You're not going to find him in philosophy. But as you begin to grope for him, where are you at? I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you, Jesus. And as we grope for him, you know what? My personal feeling, he just got a little closer so that one of our gropes would actually touch him. Because he was drawn by your faith and your hunger. Faith and hunger. Hello, you, some of you don't understand a lot of what I'm saying right now, but I'm 62 years old. I've seen it. I've heard it. I've watched it. And I've seen people lose revelation. And I've seen what it's done to their lives and to the lives of their families. You'd have never known that at one time they sat on an apostolic pew. You'd have never known that one time they preached an apostolic message. But they lost the revelation. And he became hidden from them. And when he hides from you, he takes light with him. And so you say, well, I have light. Yeah, but your light is dimming. Your light is like the early dawn or the late dusk of night. It's lost its clearness and its sharpness and it's not defined how it was one day. What's happening? You're rejecting revelation. And he's going into hiding slowly, but just like the sun. One day it will set and you'll see nothing but darkness. But he can't hide from faith and hunger the Bible tells us Paul writes he says if our gospel is veiled or hidden it's veiled to those who are perishing 4.3 of 2nd Corinthians now hear me there's somebody that specializes in this deal whose mind the God of this age has blinded you understand when you start walking into shadows you're walking into the territory where Satan dwells. And the deeper you get into the shadows, the more he's going to confront you. You understand? That's how it works. And when he confronts you, he's going to blind you. In other words, you're not really going to see your problem. Every out, everybody else may see it, but you won't because you are blinded. And you cannot see. Amen. He does this to people that don't know him. He does it to people that have sat on the pews. He does it. Unfortunately, he's good at it. 
He doesn't want you to believe, because if you do believe, the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, will shine on you. Hallelujah. I find it amazing when I read, and I, it's a short verse, Luke, Luke 23, 45. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Doesn't mean a lot to some of you this morning. But the veil was split from the top to the bottom. And the Spirit of God rushed out of that Holy of Holies. Rushed out. So much so that the graves would open. And then when Jesus resurrected, the strangest of strange scriptures, those that were saints resurrected with them and appeared to many in Jerusalem. I'm not building doctrine on that ladies and gentlemen because it's just one verse, but it is mighty strange. No, I'll tell you what happened. The Spirit of God was actively working in the life of people. Amen. Who had even died. Amen. 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 So the sun was dark and the veil was torn. And I close with this last portion of scripture this morning. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul writes and he says, But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. Just me. The veil that was torn now became the veil that blinded. God hid himself from them. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Now, I got I to gotta end with this last verse here. Nevertheless. I like nevertheless. It, what it literally means, in spite of. In spite of a veil being over their hearts. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So, you want something from God today? I'm going to tell you this. He will not hide from those that have faith and hunger. It doesn't say has faith and has a great knowledge of God. It just simply says have faith. They may not know much, but what they do know makes them want to have more. He's not going to play hide and seek long with you. He's going to come out. I'm sorry, this is me again. I can hear God giggling. Right here! <laughs> right here! <laughs> there you are! Here I am! And he, and he takes you in his arms and he hugs you. And when he starts doing that kind of stuff, all the bitterness, the anger, all that past just begins to melt away. What brought him out of hiding? Your faith, your hunger. Amen. It's good to be here this morning in this house. Amen. Why don't we all just come and pray today? Let's all just demonstrate a little faith by just approaching the altar. Get close to him. Get close to the master. Praise God. Get close to the master.